Check out our new iPhone application to keep track of your orchids. Link in the description box. Hi there! In this video I would like to update you on my supposedly magnesium deficient plants, mainly fells. It's been exactly one year and two months since I filmed the last video. And if you don't know that video yet, I would suggest you watch it first because I explain there why I think my plants suffer from magnesium or suffered from magnesium deficiency, show symptoms and talk a bit about the role of magnesium in orchids and why I chose to use less Epsom salts than generally recommended. In today's video, I will show you how the plants are doing today. There were some noticeable changes, but you can judge for yourself in a minute. In last year's video, I told you that the diagnosis, magnesium deficiency, can only be confirmed by the treatment. If it works, the suspected diagnosis, magnesium deficiency, should be correct. And I only changed one thing. I started using Epsom salts, which is magnesium sulfate. I used it in addition to my regular fertilizing. I went through this little 100 grams container of Epsom salts. In one year. I use it for pretty much my whole collection, which contains about 80 orchids. But I did focus on the ones that I showed in the video. So they might have received a bit more. One gram of these Epsom salts increased the electrical conductivity by 633 microsiemens per centimeter, which is about 405 ppm TDS. Let's go through the individual plants together. I will try to put last year's video somewhere on the screen so that you can compare how they developed. There are two main findings I would say. First, the spots did not disappear. And I thought they might disappear, so that was quite a surprise. The plants might look a bit more lush and green in general, but the spots are still there. And the second finding is that some fells have shed quite a few leaves, the oldest and most affected ones. This one has shed, I think, two leaves. I assume that orchids do not replace magnesium once it has been translocated at some point in time. They do not synthesize new chlorophyll with magnesium in old leaves that suffer from magnesium deficiency, leaves in which they already sacrificed chlorophyll to relocate magnesium to the newer leaves and therefore develop the light green spots. If the yellowing doesn't disappear. The only way to tell if substituting magnesium helped is to observe whether or not the newest leaves will develop symptoms with time or not. It's still difficult to tell. But I think there are more unaffected leaves than before. I think you can tell that. So, this leaf was developing in the last video and this leaf had already been affected and this leaf grew this year it's completely unaffected completely green just as the older one so I think that the better magnesium supply from about the point in time this leaf developed did help these two leaves to produce enough chlorophyll to be completely green. I think this one is quite interesting because the oldest leaves didn't shed too long ago and I kept them. They keep falling off but I just wanted to show you how it looks like when they shed their leaves, their oldest leaves. It does look worrying, <laughs> I have to admit that doesn't look nice I don't like it but it's okay the new sleeves look really nice no symptoms on this leaf that grew this year 
no symptoms on the nose leave, but that's quite normal. Last year, the nose leave pretty much never showed any symptoms, but the second oldest leaf did. So where's the second oldest leaf? Let me see. Now the leaves are <laughs> falling off. This is the second oldest leaf. It was the youngest leaf last year. No symptoms have developed. I can't prove it, but I do think it's due to the improved magnesium supply. By the way, I never cut off any leaves that are yellowing. I let them fall off on their own. And I do the same with flower spikes. They can look quite unsightly, but I think it's a good thing to leave them on the plant so that it can pull out the nutrients that it invested in the spike beforehand. So this is the next one. It's doing quite well. The big leaf that you see here just started growing last year and had about the size of this little leaf that is growing at the moment. And it hasn't grown another leaf apart from this one this year, but it did shed two leaves and I think also two spikes and it grew another spike it bloomed twice. It doesn't really make much sense, but at least this leaf stayed green and the nose leaf stayed green. So that's two leaves that are very green and don't show any symptoms. And last year, the second leaf showed symptoms. I think that's a slight improvement. So I think this plant is quite interesting. This leaf here was the youngest leaf last year. And the symptoms of this leaf are still there, but they might have improved a bit if we compare it to last year. But another interesting thing is that it only grew one new leaf and a huge basil keiki. And the keiki does not show any symptoms, no spots whatsoever. And I think that is a success, but I have to mention that the plant lost a few leaves as well. And I think in this one we can see it quite good. You see, the old stem becomes longer and longer. No leaves left. And it's leaning over. The keiki has a new spike as well. So, quite a few changes on this plant. This little primary hybrid is doing quite well. This leaf was already there last year with, I would say, slight symptoms. And this leaf was growing at the time. It's very nice and green. This leaf has grown this year and another one is coming. I would say this one is quite vigorous. The spots haven't disappeared on the older leaves, but the new leaves are symptom free. This plant showed some other putative signs of magnesium deficiency, reddening, but I'm quite convinced that this type of reddening is due to genetics and not because of any deficiency, but it could be deficient in something, in magnesium possibly, but I don't think that this reddening is due to magnesium deficiency. And the plant did shed leaves, but again, not because of magnesium deficiency, I think, but because I repotted it quite roughly and it lost most of its roots and new roots were poking through the oldest leaves, as you can see here. 
stabbed the oldest leaves and they died. Unfortunately, but there is a flower spike. I'm very happy about that because I didn't see it bloom after the rough repotting last year. This poor plant was one of the worst cases last year and it's still very unhappy and it couldn't recover because it lost the complete root system, almost all its roots, due to my repotting. So it's my fault, one of my repotting victims. Surprisingly, the leaves look more lush than last year. Don't ask me why. There are no roots, or almost no roots, that could take up nutrients. The keikis don't show any symptoms. But I'm very glad that I do have two backup plants. I removed the big keiki that you saw in last year's video. This one was doing quite well in the first place. I don't think it had any symptoms. I was pondering if the red underside of the leaves could be a symptom of magnesium deficiency, but I don't think that's the case. And this plant had a problem with a spike coming out of the crown, but it did produce two very nice leaves. Everything is fine. The new spike comes from a leaf axle and it branched quite nicely. I'm very happy with that. This is another felt that I showed you last year. It still has the reddening on the leaves. I still don't know where it comes from. This is another fell that I showed you last year. It's doing very well. And this one didn't shed any leaves. But the symptoms, the putative symptoms were different from the others. I suspected that the reddening on the undersides of the leaves could have something to do with magnesium deficiency. I don't really think that that is the case. It's doing fine now, better than last year, but I don't know why. Maybe magnesium helped. This is my BLC. It did show quite a lot of reddening last year, around this time of the year. And there is not much reddening left. I think that improved a lot. But I don't know if the plant really cares, to be honest. Because it was a happy plant last year. It was a happy plant this year. I don't know. There are two new growths in process down here. They do show a little bit of reddening, but not too much. And this plant does have pink or purple blooms, so it might be genetics as well. This is my yellow Elsie. It has been doing so well this year compared to last year. You can see that it had some severe reddening on some of the leaves in April. That was when the sun was hitting it for the very first time this year. And I think that this reddening was due to heat stress and drought stress, but not due to magnesium deficiency. Now it's doing very well. Maybe magnesium helped. I don't know. So this video turned out to be quite long, but I really wanted to show you every single plant that I showed in last year's video so that you can judge for yourself whether you can see an improvement or not. I definitely see changes, of course. A year has passed and I think some changes were due to the improved magnesium supply. The first leaf, the youngest leaf, was unaffected in most cases last year too. But this year, also the second oldest leaf and sometimes the third oldest leaf was unaffected as well. They did shed some leaves, the oldest leaves, but I think this might be part of a rejuvenation process. And I hope that the longer I use magnesium, the healthier the plants will look. 
I will definitely get myself another little container of Epsom salts since I still don't have MSU magic fertilizer. Yeah, that's it for today. I hope this was useful to anyone and I hope that you are all doing very, very well. Bye bye.